Hello, I'm Dina Nagar and I work on communications at the World Bank. This week we opened our spring meetings with social media and your questions. I'm here today with Dr. Mirza Jahani uh, with your questions for Dr. Mirza Jahani, CEO of the Aga Khan Foundation in the U.S. And his work has primarily focused on impact investments for development projects in Africa and in Asia. Dr. Jahani, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Um, let me first start by asking you, what is impact investing? Impact investing is just a form of investing by private sector investors to maximize social development while recouping some of the financial capital that's invested. It's turning the whole idea of private sector investment around and it's focusing very much on the philosophy of teaching people to fish rather than to fish, to give the people the fish. So it's very much changing and shifting the form of philanthropy that's taken place for a very long time. And uh, we have a question from Uganda. In your opinion, what is the single most effective intervention for rural development in Africa? Rural development fundamentally is about increasing agricultural productivity. And if you can do that, then you give it a very, very good kickstart. And all of our rural development programs in Africa, in Uganda, in Tanzania, in Kenya, in Mozambique, are all about giving that farmer that increase in productivity. But gradually, you need to move and connect the farmers to the markets. And if you can do that, if farmers, through new technology, know what the prices are in the marketplace, they're able to recoup a lot better uh, for the labor that they put into producing their crops. Um, and from Pakistan, our third question is, agriculture has to be strong for a country's industrial success. So why can't rural farmers get reasonable incentives? Yes, and, our, hmm. um, and aren't farmers being neglected in this whole process of development? I think for a very long time, rural areas across the developing world have been neglected. But there is a shift and there is, an, there is some optimism in countries like India, uh, where you're seeing that the terms of trade the, f the prices that people are paying for agriculture products have increased. As the numbers of people living in urban areas have gone up, people are now increasingly paying more for the agriculture products. And commodity prices worldwide have gone up as a consequence. So I think the farmers' balance of power for the farmers has now gone much more to their favor. And it's for us in the international community to help farmers capture those favorable terms of trade that are existing. And at the Aga Khan Foundation, we are looking at how do you best connect farmers to markets? How do you mechanize farming as the rural areas get depopulated? In Central Asia, for example, land holdings are very small, and we're looking for ways in which we can consolidate land holdings so that the farmers become even more productive. So I think that the future looks brighter than it has been in the past. And from Nigeria, the question is, we operate an NGO that focuses on health for rural dwellers and have difficulty funding some projects for widows. Um, how do we overcome this challenge? Widows are a fundamentally important uh, constituency of all of our rural development programs, particularly in fragile states, states that have been in civil war, like Tajikistan, where, you, as you would expect, the numbers of widows are large. And what we are finding is that if you allow those widows to come together and create their own groups, they have much more power as a, as a group than as individuals. And many of the single family uh, households are also headed by women. So those widows and those women are beginning to forge certain alliances for improving women's livelihoods in rural areas. And I think that if we can encourage more of that coming together and linking up with other organizations like Help International, Help Age International, they are looking at how do you create those those community groups that can actually foster development much more than individually was possible for widows. So I would encourage people uh, in Nigeria uh, to look at that uh, as, a, as a possible um, way forward. And um, from Zambia, the question is, to what extent do you think the development world is really open to new ways of thinking? It is a difficult thing, and I think it's a very good question to say, well, what, how do you introduce new thinking? And with Mott Foundation, the Aga Khan Foundation has been looking at the whole concept of community philanthropy. And the reason why we're looking at that is that we think that the new way of doing work in these developing countries is actually to go back and understand the social fabric and the social cohesion 
and the community groups that were there for a very long time. And the new thing that we really need to do is to actually identify what already exists in communities for, for self-help uh, and then building on that rather than to continue to foster new organizations, new civil society organizations that are much more difficult to sustain into the future. If you build on what exists already, the chances of it sustaining into the future, the chances of it being locally based and on local knowledge are that much greater. So we hope that this whole area of new community philanthropy uh, for the developing world uh, will begin to get some traction uh, in the coming years as we work with uh, Ford and, for, and Mott Foundations and other large foundations in this country. I think that will be a fundamental shift in how we think about development going forward. Dr. Jayani, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for joining us at World Bank Live.